This week for our project, I decided to show you how to make a really cool looking campfire in a fire pit for you to use in your dollhouse scene. Stay tuned and see how easy and fun this project is. All right, to prepare, I've cut out my base or my what I'm going to build my fire pit on. And I cut mine out of builder's foam. I've got, still got a little bit of builder's foam I'm trying to get used up. So that's what I used. I cut a pattern and traced it on the builder's foam. The outside of my circle is three and a quarter inches in diameter, and the inside is two and seven eighths. I figured that was a good size. I am covering mine with blocks. Now, there's other options, and I'll talk about those as we work through this. And it doesn't have to be particularly neat. This is all going to be covered up. So our first step, I want to make the inside of this black, because I want it, I don't want to see the pink. Oh, and I also, I painted the outside rim gray. I did this so that if this shows between my blocks, It'll look like mortar. It won't look like pink builder's foam. Not quite the look I was after. And I did, this is actually, it cracked and broke right over here in this thin area. I'm not too worried about that. By the time, the paint's already holding it together, and by the time I get done with all the layers I'm putting on this, it will be glued together sufficiently. Now, this is a piece of black cardstock that I had, and it's just a scrap, it doesn't have to be anything fancy, I just want to make this black. Um, and it's cut an inch wide and long enough to wrap around. And what I'm going to do, and I'm not even using, let's see, what am I using? This tacky glue is right here. I am going to, and it doesn't even matter if this bubbles, um, not really going to matter on this, because we're not really going to see much of this either. A lot of this will be hidden. So this is our first step. So we want to get this in and glue it in. Now the inside's suddenly a lot neater, right? And we're not even going to really see much of this. We'll see a little bit of it. A little bit of this is going to show, but not a lot. Now that glue needs to dry. And while that's drying, I'll start working on my stones that are going to be on the outside. I'm using egg carton. And you can see here's one I trimmed off of. It's the outside rim of the egg carton. I cut half inch strips and I cut those half inch strips into, oh, how long are these? Are these an inch? I didn't even see my ruler. But I just, oh, it's right here in front of me. That's why I can't find it. And they're around an inch. Some are a little shorter than an inch. Some are a little longer. And what we are going to do is we're going to start putting these on the outside. And you'll have to work on this in batches, you aren't going to be able to work. Oh, I know what I forgot to put that. No, I forgot one step on that. You want to bend it a little bit in your fingers uh, before you put the glue on. Kind of pre-curve it. And do a row all the way around. And as you get working towards your stopping place. You'll find you'll have to adjust the size of your blocks a little bit so that they will meet up neatly. And I'm not even going to make the whole first round before I stop. I'm only going to do a few and let them dry. 
And I'm butting these right up next to each other. And I need more glue on the ends. Let's see if I can really saturate this with glue. There. That's what we're after. And you might have to hold them a bit. In fact, if they really fight with you, put a little super glue in there. Just don't get your fingers in it once you put the super glue on. Use some kind of a tool, whether it's a knitting needle or a skewer or tip of your tweezers, something. Don't glue your fingers to this. Now, we'll do a few more. And then I'm going to let these dry. And after these get dry, I will continue. I'm going to do probably only the first about four of them. Then I'm going to let this dry. And then I will come back after this glue has all dried and start, and I will finish the first row. But I like to have these set up really well so that when I get around to the end, I'm not shifting these. Because if these are still wet glue and I come all the way around, I start working like this, it's going to move these. So I'm, in fact, I'm going this far and then I'm going to let it dry and then I'll continue and when I get the first bottom row done I'll come back. All right, so the first row is finished and I did have to cut one the last block I had to be cut shorter that's fine I figured it would so now we're going to start the second row and the second row we're going to go over a space because we want to start over full blocks and we're going to we need to center our block over the seams and we will continue around on the second row just like the first row. And since mine is an inch tall and my blocks are a half inch tall, I will get, I'll need two rows. If you made your blocks a different size or you cut your base differently, you might need to make more more rows. You'll need at least two to make it look right. But let's see, where am I? Let's start right here. And of course my super glue decided to seal itself shut while I was not working with it here for a few minutes. Well, there we go. That's going. Just be, sure, just be careful you don't glue yourself to your work. I've glued myself to the bricks at least, let's see, twice on the last uh, row. So I've got super glue all over my thumb. But that's really all there is to it. This is a pretty basic technique. We've done it before. Now you could use other materials. Um, if you want to use um, the builder's foam, you could also carve your blocks, make it thicker, and carve your stones right into it. If you want to do that, go back and look at, oh, I don't remember which video it was. It was part of my Toy Store building series from a couple of years ago. I will try to remember to put the link to that video in the blog post for this video. But on that one, I did a very similar construction. I cut a disc, a donut shape of builder's foam, and I carved stones in it to make a, a, it's a planter and a lamp base all in one. So you could do that. Um, you could, you know, make this out of other things too. You could put real rocks on it if you want to. You could make blocks that look like bricks, you know, like, like red brick. You could do anything. I mean, this is up to you. Um, use your imagination and uh, see what you can come up with. So this one, we can go a little further. I'll probably go about halfway and then let it dry and then do the other half. So I won't bore you with that because 
I'm sure watching me glue these blocks on is not very exciting. So I'm going to continue on a little couple more blocks. I'll let it dry and then I will continue the top row. And when the top row is completed, I'll come back and we'll go to the next step. All right, so now I've got the both rows done and the glue is dry enough that I can handle it now. Now because cutting, I didn't cut real exact or the foam is off a little bit, maybe it compressed, I've got a little ledge. So I'm going to go through here and just cut my scissors just right level with the foam. So I've got a nice flat top. And that's after we do this, then we'll be ready to make our seat. That's gonna because a lot of these fire pits have a an edge on them that you can use as a seating area, or that you can just you know just finishes off the top. Looks like I need to trim. And I'll come back in and trim that part later. So. I made a pattern, same time I made this pattern that I used for cutting out my fire pit, I made another pattern. And this one is the outside edge is bigger around and the middle is, is smaller. So the outside is three and a half and the inside is two and a quarter. Um, and that's going to fit on there. And what we are going to use, what I'm going to use, I bought some Primo. Last time I was at Michael's, they had clay on sale. It's been a couple weeks ago. And this is Primo's Gray Granite. And I really like this color. I thought it was really neat. And I knew I'd find something to do with it. So this, I think, is going to be perfect. So I'm going to kind of lay my pattern down. I've rolled it out. I conditioned it and rolled it out just on the thickest setting on my pasta machine. Uh, if you don't have a pasta machine, just roll it out nice and flat and even. Um, if you don't, if you're going to use a roller to roll it out, you might want to use oh, like some craft sticks that are stacked together to make a nice even thickness. Something to lay on each side so that you can roll it out so it's nice and even. That's the only trick here is we need to have this rolled out so it's an even thickness throughout. Otherwise, it won't look like a like the finished top, and it's okay if that's not exactly you know cut real smooth. There, we are going to cut the center out. There. Now let's peel our paper up. Now, one thing I want to do, besides kind of evening this out, make sure everything's trimmed pretty well, I'm going to run my finger along here and soften this edge. I don't want this, this cut edge on the top. I want it to be a little bit rounded off. Um, and then I'm going to use, what am I going to use? I don't see what I wanted. That oh, it is. I'm actually going to make some indentations here to kind of make it look like this seat was molded in four pieces rather than just one big piece because in reality it would have to be just about done in multiple pieces or it would be too heavy to put on there. Now we need to make it look like the like this fire pit has been used. Since there will be a fire in the middle there will be soot and ashes that will get onto this and it will make it kind of blackened around the edge. So Now if you want yours to look brand new you can skip this step. But we are going to put a fire in the fire pit. Yeah, that's coming up. We are going to make, we're going to build the fire. After all, those uh, marshmallows we made a couple weeks ago, they need to be able to, to um, have some place to cook those, right? Yeah. 
there. Now, while we have this out, um, decide which is the bottom. If, unless you want this to look brand new, there's probably dirt on the bottom edge. I know anything out on the patio or in the yard at my house gets it's mud splattered on it. Even if there's no dirt nearby, it seems like things like this always get, because of the rain and everything that we get here, they always get a little bit of, of discoloration. And you might even want to add a little green. Not very much. Just a little. And not so much on the top, mainly on the bottom. You can add a little bit on the top row too if you want, but it will be a little more protected. There, that's all there is to that. Now I'm going to very carefully move this piece from my tile to a paper plate, and I'm going to bake it according to the package directions on the clay, which for Primo say 275, and I'll bake it for probably about 10 minutes. It's not very thick. And when that's baked, we'll be back. One thing I forgot to mention, in fact, I almost forgot to do until I put my clay in the oven. I want to seal my bricks. And to do that, I am just going to use, this is some satin Mod Podge. If you have matte, that would also work. Uh, I would not use gloss for this one because stones wouldn't be glossy. I think I can get away with satin, though. But this will keep that chalk on. It will also help to protect these stones. Because after a while, I've noticed that the um, if you don't seal the egg carton, the edges tend to peel up and separate. And that kind of ruins the effect of stone, if you let that happen. But since it's warm in here, and I'm putting a pretty thin coat on, and I've got the lights on, this will dry in just a little while. So, just a very thin coat there. Now that can dry when the clay is cooled off from being baked and this is dry. We'll go on to the next step, which is getting ready to put the fire in. All right, so this is all baked off and cooled off. This is pretty much dry, not completely. It's dry enough. So you can see this is made so it'll fit on top of here. Now we need to make a place for the fire. Well the light for our fire is going to be one of these little tea lights. You know the kind you buy them at the, the craft store. They're not very expensive. You can replace the battery so that's good and we are going to leave the bottom access so we can get to that. For the fire to sit on I glued a piece of cardstock to a piece of a black cardstock to a piece of cardboard. This is the back of a tablet. And I put a hole in it so that'll fit. It doesn't have to be perfectly in the center. It does need to fit in here, but it doesn't need to fit super tight. Um, the other thing I did, I cut another piece of cardstock. This is the same width as this base is tall. And my idea is, and then I kind of curled it up so it would curl. Now I'm going to cut this so it'll just barely or not quite meet. I am going to put some glue on it. And this will become a shelf for our, um, you'll see, for our little black sandwich of cardboard and paper to glue to. Because our fire will be mostly glued to this piece of black cardstock. It won't be glued, it'll be tacked to the top of this a little bit. But in the event that your light bulb gives out on you, you should be able to pull that out if you had to. Now, I want to glue around the edge of this and it's okay we're going to be sloppy but most of this is going to be hidden 
underneath the fire. I'm just putting glue around the rim here. And that little piece of cardboard that I just put in there, that is mainly just to support this so it doesn't slide all the way down when we start pushing on it. I think I am it doesn't quite meet over there. That's okay, it doesn't have to, as long as it's glued at least part of the way around. And I'm gonna stick it right on here. Whoops. Come on, glue in there. There we go. That way the center is supported. Let me make sure it's glued. I think I'm gonna put another bead of glue right here. This, does, like I said, this is not going to show. This will be covered up in our next step. But, yeah, I got to thinking it'll be easy to change the battery because the batteries are easy to get to. You just, you'll need a tiny screwdriver and a coin to open this up. But I don't know how long these light bulbs last. So I suppose there's a possibility that we could burn the light bulb out. So that's why I came up with this. The first one I did, I didn't, this is one I did last week. And I didn't cover this with black so you can see the white down there. And I glued the, everything right to it and I thought, well, that's not going to be good because, like I said, if we ever need to get that out of there, that could be an issue. Now this glue needs to dry and it needs to dry all the way because we are going to be pushing down on that. Actually, we could put that on though. We can go ahead and put our top on because that needs to be on now too. And lots of glue. We can clean up any glue spillage later. There. Now, all this glue has to dry, so I probably will let this dry overnight and let it get completely set up, and then I'll be back and we'll finish this up. All right, so this is dry now, and what I did, I ended up gluing in, I'm hoping the camera's, yeah, the camera looks like it's picking that up, a piece of chenille stem. I had some black chenille stem here for two reasons. Number one, I had a huge gap on this side and I wasn't sure if that was going to show and also I felt like that was not tight enough it was not being held in because that's our base for our fire I'm going to slide our, our light back in Let's see it sits nice now this we're going to set off to the side because now we need to work on our wood for our fire this is a branch out of my yard it's a really thin branch um, really thin probably an sixteenth of an inch around eighth inch in that size range. You want something pretty skinny because you want it to look in scale. And then we need to cut it down into pieces. And it's going to take quite a few of these. We're going to cut it up. So my pruning shears here. And I'm going to cut various lengths. I'm not going to make them all the same. So these are going to need too long. And those are too long, so I'm going to cut those down. And some of these will use and some of them will just kind of be on the side. But we need to have them so that they will cover up, so if I can get this where the camera can pick it up, the flame. So we, you'll need to cut a bunch, <clears throat> a bunch of these. It's going to take a lot. It's okay if they're crooked, that's cool. And then after you get a bunch cut, I'm going to cut more off camera because this is going to take a while. You need some flat black paint. You won't need much. And I'm actually using a Q-tip for a couple of reasons. I don't want to ruin a paintbrush by getting it. It's going to get kind of rough in here. And also, I don't need a paintbrush. I'm going to paint both ends. That way, it doesn't matter which end is up. And I'm going to paint one side. And each one's going to be a little different, but make sure the ends are painted and get some black around. This is going to represent the charring that happens when your wood is on fire. You know, you have fire, wood burns, it gets black. 
And we're going to, not the whole thing though, because you want some sides that aren't, but it's okay if it gets all around it. The soot and everything is going to make it really black. And it's okay if it lays down on the tile. That's why we work on a tile. And it's going to get on your fingers. There's no way around it on this. Now if you want some wood off to the side in a stack next to your fire pit, don't paint that part. That wood you'll want not burnt. Oh, and also on your branch, when you pick your branch out to cut up, try and get one that's fallen off of a tree or off of a shrub if you can. Because the ones that you cut off fresh are going to have pitch in them and they're going to, they could get sticky and, and kind of nasty over time. But if that's all you've got, that's okay. They're so small, I think they'll dry out pretty well. But I will continue this um, process off camera. And when I get these all painted and get a bunch more cut, because here's the, the one I made to try it out, you can tell it takes a lot of these. So I'm going to get a bunch more cut and a bunch of them and them all painted and then I'll be back. Alright, so the paint is dry on those. I did a few more. I'll probably have to do more. Now, we are going to be gluing mainly to our black cardstock that's at the base. There will be some glue against this. My hope is that if the light bulb should ever burn out, actually we need to do one more thing first. We are actually going to put just a little bit of glue here and here so that this will stay if we ever need to take this out, it's not going to be easy to take it out, but it will be removable if we have to, if the bulb would burn out. The battery is replaceable, so that can be done. Taking it out is only a last resort, and I'm not even sure if it'll come out. So, we're going to put, let's see, where is this? It's going to come out to about there. And we're going to put glue my hope is with enough patience we won't destroy this completely because yeah the bottom row of sticks will be glued the bottom few will be glued to the light bulb but they will also that one's too long we'll come back to that one They'll also be glued to each other, more so than to the light bulb, or the, the bulb cover, actually. Oopsie. Because the bulb is actually not this whole thing. There's actually just a little tiny bulb. You can see it if you look really close. I doubt if the camera's picking it up. But there's a little tiny bulb down there, inside. And this first row of these is just so that we get a base because we are going to be building up and we're only going to do see I've got a mess now because I'm trying to do too many all right you know what I'm not going to put that one in I'm just going to do two and let this glue dry because any more than that, I was going to try and rush this. I only did two or three at a time to start on my first one I made. So okay, that glue needs to dry. When that glue gets dry, we can come back and put just a few more on and a few more, laying it dry in between. And I'll show you some of them. Some of them I will build it up off camera too because this is a tedious process, but it's really worth it in the end. So let's let the glue dry and then we'll be back. All right, so it's not this isn't completely dry, but it's it's partially dry, so we can go on with our next with some more sticks, and then we'll have to let it dry again. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put a couple right here, and these are going to be and. Fight with this. This first row is much harder than the ones that come after it, and I think I'm going to drop some super glue down on there. 
help this anchor just a little bit more. Yeah, two more. Get one more there. There. Now I'm going to put. Drop a super glue there too. There, now that will need to dry. And then I can add some on this side. And then after that set dries, then we'll be able to move on a lot quicker. So we'll let this dry and then I'll be back again. All right, so this glue is set up enough that if I'm careful, I should be able to glue the next bit on. And for this, we're just gonna repeat the same process. We're going to put some glue right here. I have a piece of hair in my glue. And then I'm going to take a piece of the wood. I'm just putting glue on it and getting this kind of balanced in here against everything else. And let's do another one. I like to put them in on this first row. I like to do them in pairs. It seems to be a stronger bond because they kind of glue to each other. I think I can do some over here too. Probably come about to there. So as you can see, only the first couple of sticks were really glued to the actual light cover. The rest of them are glued to each other. So hopefully, if we have to ever take this apart, I'll be able to do that. Now, I think at this point, we can just kind of keep adding. We'll just put some glue down here, this big pool there, and I'm going to start adding pieces of wood. Now we can use some of the longer pieces if we have them. Well, be careful and you'll figure out when you get to a point where you're starting to knock things loose that means it's time to stop and let the glue dry. It looks like it's also about time for me to go out and get another branch because I went through I've got a few here yet. But I want to get a I want to pretty much disguise this light bulb. And sometimes I find if I turn the light on while I'm gluing, it makes it a little bit easier to kind of see what I'm doing. Basically, the next process is just to continue making layers until we have this pretty much covered with wood. So I'm going to turn the camera off. I'm going to let this glue dry and then I'm going to start filling in. And when I get this all filled in, I'll come back and show you what it looks like. All right, so here it is. We've got it all done. Let me turn the light on. I'm really excited about how this turned out. We've got the campfire light. I'm not sure if the camera is pick the video camera is picking that up very well or not. In real in person it looks really really neat. Um, the only thing I'd say that I might do differently is I might if I was to do this again maybe put some black sand or use black sand paper instead of black cardstock because the glue does show a a bit around the edges, but I doubt if you'd ever really notice that. So that's our campfire, and I think it turned out really, really neat. I'll try and get some good pictures of the fire lit with the kids around making their s'mores. I hope you enjoyed this project. 
come back again next week and see what we make then. Be sure and check out the Facebook page. I do keep you up to date on the Facebook page as to whether I'll be posting a video or not. When things come up, sometimes stuff comes up and I can't get a video done. Or sometimes I just need a break. So check us out on Facebook. Be sure to read the blog post. I'll give the dimensions for the patterns I used and a little more detail there in case you missed anything. And I'll talk to you later. Bye.